It is an undeniable fact that the Holy Quran is the divine scripture that is most emphasized reflecting upon the universe. No other divine scripture stresses the importance of studying the universe as explicitly as the Holy Quran. The Amity Muslim Nobel laureate Dr. Abdus Salam once stated, Some 750 verses of the Holy Quran, almost one eighth of it, exhort the believers to study nature, to reflect, to make the best use of reason, and to make the scientific enterprise an integral part of the community's life. Among these verses, dozens relate to the celestial bodies and astronomical phenomena. Revealed 1400 years ago in Arabia to the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, at a time when scientific understanding was limited, the Holy Quran repeatedly draws our attention toward the origin of the universe, the orbits of the sun, the moon, and the planets, and the numerous stars and states that if you ponder any of them, it will undoubtedly point toward the existence of one creator. I am an astronomer, and these verses about science shape how I understand and study the universe. To me, each phenomenon in the universe reveals the hand of God and presents a story worth telling. Today, I will share one such story. This is the story of a star. Allah the Exalted proclaims in chapter 16, verse 13 of the Holy Quran, and the stars too have been pressed into service by his command. Surely in that are signs for a people who make use of their reason. In this verse of the Holy Quran, Allah uses the expression musakhar, meaning that the stars have been pressed into service, which means that the benefits that we receive from stars are entirely through Allah's grace, and their bounties exist without any effort on our part. All of the atoms that make up everything here on Earth originated in the cores of stars billions of years ago. The oxygen that you're breathing right now, the iron in your blood that makes it red, the potassium in the banana that you ate for breakfast, the calcium in your bones, the silicon in your computer and your cell phone, these elements were all forged within the depths of massive stars. Their spectacular life cycles are the reason that we have access to this atomic inventory. So everything that we see and touch and know is connected by this atomic origin. To understand how this happened, let's start at the beginning. This is a story of a star. Stars are giant burning balls of gas, primarily made of hydrogen and helium. A star forms from a cloud of dust that, for some reason, collapsed in on itself. The cloud will continue to collapse and compress until it becomes so hot and dense that hydrogen atoms deep in the core of the star, where there are high temperatures and pressures, start to smash into each other in a process called nuclear fusion. Nuclear fusion reactions are the powerhouse of the star, releasing energy that allows the star to remain bright and hot. These reactions fuse together lighter elements to make heavier ones. The process starts with the fusion of hydrogen and helium, the two lightest and simplest elements that were created in just the first two minutes of the Big Bang. Hydrogen has one proton, and two hydrogen atoms can fuse together to make helium, which has two protons. Hydrogen and helium can fuse together to form lithium, which has three protons. For stars that are about five to ten times the mass of the sun, this process continues so we get beryllium and boron and carbon and so on, creating bigger and heavier elements. Through this process, stars manufacture every atom in the universe, aside from the original hydrogen and helium from the Big Bang. Fusion continues to form the elements of the periodic table until we get to iron. Iron is the heaviest element in the interiors of stars because its nucleus is so tightly bound that energy can't be released by fusing iron. So when the entire core of the star is made up of iron, that means that the star has run out of fuel to keep it burning bright and hot. And that's a signal that the end is near. The iron core collapses and becomes extremely dense until it can't collapse anymore. Because at that moment when the core can no longer collapse, within a fraction of a second, all of the material of the star bounces off of the core and is ejected into space in a fantastic supernova explosion. In this supernova, all of the heavy elements that the star created are released from the core, and the energy of this explosion can produce elements heavier than iron, like gold, uranium, and platinum. 
all of which enrich the atomic inventory of the universe. But the end of a star's lifetime, in some ways, is just the beginning. From these extreme explosions, atoms are blasted into empty space as space dust, and the movements of other stars in the galaxy can sweep up some of these atoms and assemble clouds of gas and dust elsewhere. Such a cloud can later collapse in on itself in a process that forms new stars and planets, including planets like Earth. So it's the death of stars that provides the material to form new ones. This cosmic recycling of atoms in the universe is what connects everything, from the astronomical level to the molecular level, from cosmic history to human history. The atoms that make up the sun, the moon, the earth, and even us were created from the original hydrogen and helium of the Big Bang. All of the billions of atoms in your own body can be traced back to a stellar explosion in the Milky Way billions of years ago. So this is not just the story of a star. This is also the story of us and where we came from. The death of stars gives rise to our lives. As the famous astronomer Carl Sagan said, you are made of star stuff. In the Milky Way, two massive stars will go supernova over the course of a century. Which means that in the universe, a supernova explosion is occurring about every second. This process is basically happening all of the time. Pondering over this process, we realize the profound truth that every object is connected by this atomic origin. But as Allah states in the same verse of the Holy Quran, these are signs for people who make use of their reason. For them, these signs shine brighter than even the greatest stars in the universe and point directly toward the unity of God. As the promised Messiah Salam beautifully summarizes in his Urdu poem, What show of thy splendor is all around, my dear? Wherever we look, that way leads to thy view. Thy grandeur is witnessed in the light of the sun, thy dazzle is displayed in every star.